Hello everybody, this is Dragonzilla here, and for Halloween this year, I will be talking about the NES Godzilla Creepypasta by Cosby Daff. Now this will be the first time I have done a review on something that isn't a figure, but I have always wanted to make a video dedicated to NGC, aside from the How It Should Have Ended video, the link to that will be in the description below. And spoilers for those who haven't seen or read it yet, but anyway, here we go, and this is the story. Our main character is a guy named Zack, who is a massive Godzilla fan, and he also loves Nintendo games. So it makes sense that when the game Godzilla Monster and Monsters comes out, he receives it for his 10th birthday, but a year later, he regretfully gives it away. However, many years later, Zack buys a brand new Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES for short, and his friend Billy manages to find a copy of Godzilla Monster of Monsters, as well as The Legend of Zelda, Bomberman, and Action 52. The game starts off normal, until Godzilla battles the squid kaiju Gazora, who glitches uncontrollably, and then he encounters an oversized Mogira. Zack thinks nothing of this at first, and puts it down as an old game that is just polluted in glitches, and time hasn't been kind to it. But as he plays on, he soon realises that isn't the case at all. The worlds that were in the original game are not present either, as they have been replaced by new worlds, but the boards are the same. And not only that, there are also some new kaiju in the game. The first new monster is Titanosaurus, who Zack doesn't remember being in the game, and believes that maybe Titanosaurus was going to be a boss character, but was replaced by Varen. So with that thought, he gets very excited, thinking that maybe he is playing the prototype version. However, when he moves on to the next world, he notices Biolante, and is confused because Godzilla vs. Biolante came out in 1989, only a year after the game was released, and decides that perhaps Toho were going to have Biolante in the game to promote the upcoming movie for the following year. Kinda of similar to the merchandise for Godzilla vs Kong coming out a year before the actual movie itself. But when he arrives onto the next world, Trance, he sees Orga, a kaiju who did not appear until Godzilla 2000. And I love this quote that Zack gives, Those guys at Toho may be smart, but I'm pretty sure that they couldn't see into the future. If they could, then they would never have given Ronald Emmerich the rights to make that horrible Godzilla movie. And that's when it begins to occur to Zack that he has gotten a hacked version of the game. And from this point on, following the worlds after Trance, more new kaiju, regardless whether they appeared before or after the game was released, start to appear. These include Space Godzilla, Manda, Megalon, Batra, Gorosaurus, Komonga, 91 King Ghidorah, who later evolves into Mecha King Ghidorah, Destroyer, and even Magma makes a cameo as a mini boss at one point. The kaiju bosses from the original game are on one hand still present, but for the most part they are not, as they have been replaced by not monsters which start off as mix up versions of the kaiju they're meant to be, until eventually come to the point where they look absolutely nothing like the real counterparts. Throughout the game, Zack encounters other monster enemies, and I'm kinda mixed on these creatures. Some of these beasts look pretty cool, and make me wish that they are actual kaiju from the Godzilla universe itself, and there are others that don't really look like they belong to the franchise. I'm not criticising any of these designs, and I'm sure that they would make great kaiju themselves, they just look a bit too demonic. But that's just my opinion. However, there is one that is the antagonist of the story, and that is the monster Red, who freaks Zack out on the first encounter, but after the second chase, Zack gets very excited, and in celebration he insults Red, which turns out to be a big mistake, as from this point on, Red begins to torment Zack throughout the game. But more on him later. In the third world, there is also a quiz level, and the face character, who's just called Face, asks Zack some yes or no questions, and at one point, Face asks the question, would you like a new monster, and when Zack answers yes, he is rewarded with his second favourite monster, Anguirus. 
And fun fact, Anguirus was originally supposed to be in the real game itself, but was scrapped for an unknown reason. However, his sprite exists. I gotta say I really like that 8-bit model of Anguirus in the story. Seems very faithful to his Destroyer Monsters incarnation. So good work, Cosby Daff. Good work indeed. So except for the strangeness, the first four levels play out normally. However, it's when Zack reaches the fifth world, Entropy. That's when the game starts to get weird. On the quiz level, Face asks questions that have gone from random to disturbing. And when he asks Zack, do you like Mothra? And Zack answers no. He replies back by saying, too bad and takes away not only Anguirus, but Godzilla too, leaving only Mothra. So Zack is understandably frustrated by this, because Mothra was a difficult character to play as in the game. However, he has no choice but plays on as Mothra, and hopes that Godzilla and Anguirus will return later on. Entropy starts off quiet, as Mothra flies in a forest that is occupied by a herd of Macrochenia. Well, to be more accurate, they're referred as deer creatures, but they have got the trunk-like noses, so they're clearly Macrochenia. Soon the environments go from a natural forest to an apocalyptic nuclear wasteland, something that would make the Queen of the Monsters herself upset, and eventually he comes to a level that shows three periods of time. A blue hourglass shows creatures from the past, then a green hourglass shows military tanks of the present, and finally, a red hourglass shows creatures from the future. One of them turns out to be a mini-boss. Red then begins to torment Zack by recreating one of the levels as a past memory, and after defeating a creature called the Moon Beast, he reminds Zack of the time his girlfriend, Melissa, met her untimely demise by making messages that say, Melissa, kill yourself. Not only that, but shortly afterwards, in the maze levels, there are even statue faces of Melissa herself that all stare back at him. Imagine waking up in the middle of the night and seeing this face staring directly into your soul. In the next world, Extus, Godzilla returns, but not Anguirus. However, after the quiz level, right after Face asks the question, Will you miss me? Zack is given a new monster, who is a strange-looking bat-like creature called Solomon. 